In 1856, the Marietta and Cincinnati Railroad Company was looking for a route to build a new connecting line between Marietta, Ohio and Cincinnati, Ohio. A man named Samuel Coe would offer up a solution. They could build the line through his property for free, and in exchange, all he asked was that they would use their trains to haul away coal and clay. Samuel had an abundance of both things to be mined, but no way to move them. The railroad would accept the offer, and within a few short years, the town of Moonville, Ohio would be established. Join me as we explore the history of this abandoned town and talk about the ghosts of Moonville. Welcome back to the Least Professional Channel on YouTube and welcome to Ohio Legends and Tales. Today we're standing on what was once the mainline railroad between Marietta and Cincinnati, Ohio. The tunnel behind me has become popular over the years with tourists and ghost hunters alike and it's commonly mentioned when discussing haunted locations around the state. But as we've seen already in this series, sometimes the legends don't live up to the history. Moonville itself was never much of a town. It did have a post office established in 1857. The first postmaster was George Arms. The name of the post office would be changed in 1858 to Big Sand Furnace before being changed back to Moonville in 1863 and ultimately changed to Hope Furnace in 1865. At its peak in the 1870s, Moonville had just over 100 residents. That number would dwindle over time until 1947 when the final family would leave the area. There are four popular ghost stories associated with the Moonville Tunnel and the surrounding area. This is believed to be the spirit of an engineer that died in a head-on collision near the tunnel. On November 4, 1880, there was a train wreck where an engineer named Frank Lawhead and a fireman named Charles Crick were killed. The accident happened near King Station, about two miles northeast of here. The legend says that you can see a ghostly figure dressed in white and waving a bright lantern while walking along the path. This is believed to be the spirit of a brakeman that was killed while drunk on the job. He supposedly fell off the train he was working on to his death. This one's a little harder to pinpoint the name on, as there were a few accounts of brakemen being killed in the area. One possibility was an M. Davitt, who was killed in a collision. But there are other possibilities based on what I was able to dig up in newspapers from around the time. The problem with this one is that being a brakeman is a dangerous job, and there are many stories of deaths and injuries that happened over the years not only in Moonville, but many other places around the state. I can't help but wonder why this location would be more haunted than others where Brickman met similar fates. One of the more pleasant reported hauntings in the area is that of the Lavender Lady. She supposedly appears as a thin, elderly woman walking alongside the trail. When spotted, she will cross the trail, fall off on one side, only to disappear before hitting the ground. Upon her disappearance, the air begins to smell of lavender. I could not find any names attached to the supposed ghost, and the story is about as vague as you might expect. Many of the places I searched claim that several women were killed by trains over the years and that she could be any one of them. This is supposedly the ghost of a man named Baldy Keaton who liked to get drunk and cause trouble. One night he got drunk and tried to start a fight with a group of men and was promptly thrown out of the bar. He was jumped by that same group of men while walking home and thrown off the side of the tunnel right behind me, sustaining injuries that would ultimately end his life. Now I did find a story in a couple of newspapers from 1886, which do confirm a man named David Baldy Keaton was killed when he was struck by a train on June 28, 1886. He was walking home to Hope Furnace, formerly Moonville, from a court appearance in Zaleski. They write that he left Zaleski shortly after midnight to walk home, but it appears to have sat down on the tracks to rest and was struck and killed. He was buried in the Keaton Cemetery, about two and a half miles from here, near Lake Hope. Though there are many other verified deaths on and around the tracks in the area, those are the most commonly shared stories. The rail line continued to operate for years after the town's last resident had left. The rail was finally abandoned in 1988, with the last scheduled freight train passing through in August of 1985. One other story of note comes from the Chillicothe Gazette on January 23rd, 1895. They reported that fast freight number 99 westbound was stopped en route to Moonville when a ghost dressed in a white robe appeared on the tracks. It carried a lantern 
and had a long white beard, and its eyes glowed red like balls of fire. The story mentions that when the engineer stopped the train, the ghost fled the tracks and disappeared behind some rocks nearby. According to the report, this was not the first time a train had stopped at the site of the apparently well-known ghost. I do find the detail about the ghost walking off the tracks to be odd. You would think a ghost would just vanish, or levitate away. It sounds to me more like someone in the area playing a prank on the engineers as they pass through. It's also possible that the paper was printing stories to get a rise out of their readers, as a train stopping for a ghost sighting doesn't exactly jump out as newsworthy. So, what of the ghosts of Moonville? I've been here many times, both in the day and at night. In the darkness, it is definitely an eerie place out in the middle of nowhere with no lights or people around. Standing on either side of the tunnel in the darkness provides a truly terrifying experience as you can see the arch of the tunnel in the moonlight and nothing but darkness staring back at you. I think many of the stories here are born out of the fear of the unknown, coupled with the truth of the many deaths over the years. The train tracks can be very dangerous places and especially when the tracks like these ones were the only way in and out of town. Many people did in fact lose their lives walking this line, but many of the experiences people have had can easily be attributed to expectations. Many people come here looking for ghosts. The history is well documented and it's easy to find. They show up already psyched out because of what they've heard and then they jump at every little noise. A small rock falls from the tunnel above? Must have been the bully. He likes to throw rocks at people. A flicker of light out of the corner of your eye? Well, that was the engineer. He's warning us of an oncoming train that only he can see. The smell of lavender. It was the lavender lady, still walking the tracks all these years later. This place is full of history. We owe it to ourselves to preserve it. Whether you believe the spirits still roam the tracks that once laid here or not, people once called this place home. They lived here, loved here, and died here. And when the night is dark and the air is calm, you can still hear the sound of the midnight train rolling through one last time. I want to thank you all for watching this first ever Halloween special for the Ohio Legends and Tales. I have a lot of awesome projects I'm working on, so if you want to see more like this, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. If you're new here and want to see more, there's a whole playlist of Legends and Tales videos right over here. So go check that out, and I hope you all have a great day and a spooky Halloween, and I'll see you in the next one.